on this week's episode of Forever I Do. One of the interesting things that I find out since COVID day, let me tell you, you know, so Tamika can book. Wait, Wait. Wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It take a global pandemic for my wife to go and cook. And she can, and she can cook, to, you know, cook before. When you do a wedding as an MC, persons must believe that you're a part of the family. And that is really the difference. You, you, you give that family feeling. It's wonderful. This is Forever I Do. A marriage with respect for each person's interests and desires has no comparison. And that's why there's no stopping Team Twain and Tamika Harrison. That, that story has to come from there. Because <laughs> you don't know what... So, so, um, so, so we met through my girlfriend at the time. That was back in... Well, that was long time high in high school, school though. High school. My high school girlfriend um, was her oh, friend. Right, we were good friends. We used to have lunch together and she used to talk about him all the time. <laughs> and then we met at, it was an I, ISCF concert. Yeah. And I remember when I met him, I always talk about how I could not understand what the excitement was for. Because people used to talk about him, about him cute. Yeah. But his eyebrows were just bushy. That's what I noticed the first time I met him. <laughs> and then I grew on him. <laughs> no, but actually, so we met, but we weren't, yeah. we weren't really friends, we weren't in yeah. touch, we were in the same church family circle, but... To like we run into each other like once in a while, but there was no great conversation or anything like that. Dang. And then you went, well I mean, high school ended, you went away to college, right? Um, and then we weren't even in touch until we counseled together at Amorland's summer camp, so that's when we reconnected. And That's not when we reconnected. So then, when my things are in the story, we reconnected when we both served on our regional executive. It was at Moreland Church. before that? No, Moreland came after that. Oh, oh, oh. Right. right. So, reconnected. Um, I was on the national exec at the time, and he was on the regional, the regional exec. Region. And I remember right. when we were having elections, and I, I said your name, and I was like, who oh, from where? <laughs> and then he came and he was elected. And so, we, there are lots of events that you do together and mm -hmm. travel the island together. And so, we started spending more time together and talking a lot more. And then, we we'll come to the Moorlands together. I went away. Because I came back from Moorlands. What did, what did happen? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. So, so, we're, so we're connected at that time, but then we're still out of touch, don't it? Well, good. Okay, so we got back in touch. We used to talk all the time. Right. Then went our separate ways because right. I think they probably annoyed me or something. And then came right. Moorlands, and that's where I think after Moorlands is where we really started yeah. exploring a little bit more, and then we ended up together at, at the end of that year. Right. right. Snakes on a Plane, The Buff Blue Ring. That was, I think that was it. But we used to go to the movies all the time, but I think the first time we went to something together, right? It was this horrible movie, Snakes on a Plane. I don't know why you were talking about it. No, we didn't program, right? Sorry, that's true. It would have been a movie. I figure it would have been something else. It was such an awful movie. Why would you remember something like that? That's an awful movie. Wow. Don't bother me. I mean, just in terms of spending that time together, but yeah. I mean, it would have been something like a movie. I remember me, it would have been me leaving work at the time. I would have been working with my dad at the time and, and picking her up. And she lived in Long Mountain. 
<laughs> that's why you said I'll go with you. What she said. What the first thing. But yeah. we, the thing is, we spent a lot of time together because right. of church. So we were always yeah. in some space together. We, we, as I said, we used to go visit churches in the middle of nowhere. And um, and it was a group of us that inside by everybody. <laughs> we used to argue all the time. About everything. Um, but yeah, so we, we spent a lot of time together. So in terms of romantic dates, it's probably movies and things yeah. like that. And it's so sad that we can't re- I can't remember what the first day was. But as I just said, because we spent so much time together, yeah. it w- it's like it's just another thing that we're doing together because we were so used to doing things mm-hmm. together. Tell me about- um, we were together for two years before before we started, before we got engaged. Before you proposed, it was like two, three years. Yeah. Uh, I mean, during that time, of course, when you come in out of more than being a young adult and that kind of thing, you just kind of, okay, um, you see somebody and you're interested in them, so you start to have those kind of conversations, all right, um, we're going to ask her to be my girlfriend, and we started the relationship there, and it was, initially there were arguments, and we don't know why we're doing this, and, and this don't make sense, I and, lived in Mumbai at the time too, so and, we, and were I, I, we were apart, she lived in Mumbai, and it's too stressful, uh, have to carry our Spanish down early in the morning when it's dark, put her on a bus for her to go to Mumbai to come back on Friday evening and pick her up because she was still active, she was still active in church and all that kind of thing. And it was like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of these things don't make sense. But I mean, somehow, I guess that, that set us in a pretty good foundation to say, okay, um, you know that we, we've gone through some of these things and, and, and whether those kind of initial challenges then it puts it in a platform to say, all right, um, let's let's make this thing official. And, and, and I was ready for my time. No, I was ready for my time. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I've been praying about it. So, because that has been the foundation of our relationship from Joe. And so I, we actually, before we were together, we were both in long term. I see yours as it can be when you're a teenager's yeah. relationship. So I've been with somebody for about seven years. Yeah. He's been with somebody for a long time, and it's people who right, right. both our families and our friends thought we were going to end up with. So, in terms of disconnecting from that person before, for me, I got very quicker than you. Yeah. And you, just because I had been praying about it, and um, I can't say that you were necessarily well with them. Because <laughs> I, I also, I've never been a short term relationship kind of guy. I've always had, if I'm a girlfriend, it's a girlfriend of my extended period. Like, so when people say, oh, I've been together so long, how long have you been together for two months and we broke? I was like, what? Two months? Like, I've never understood those kind of short term relationships and that kind of thing. So, as Tamika said, transitioning into this one, you kind of, it's, it's just what you've been used to, this kind of long term relationship thing. And so, considering marriage now, coming up to that kind of thing and we've had and we have friends who run about the same age married, married young and that kind of thing so it, it's the kind of environment that we, we kind of grew up in so i got the car washed i got the car washed that morning no i got it washed no i got it washed i didn't wash it yeah no and then went back i got changed so it, it would it, it happened so quickly though that's the thing that we tell our friends who are getting married and that kind of thing this you spend months putting all this thing together and then you wake up the morning and it's a night and everybody gone home and then you wake up the next morning and you're married. So but it but it was it was such a good day. It was, it was such a good day. Even that, with yeah. all the madness and yeah. all the, the yeah. things. My sister dressed first right before we we're supposed to go out and we had to their their pictures of us sewing her into the dress. Well they were sewing her into the dress. I was kinda of just standing there like <laughs> seriously. But so there are a lot of things that went wrong. Like it was a crazy day, but when she turned the car, <laughs> they um. Still have points. I got points. <laughs> you know, same married. You're too late for that. <laughs> so, so to be honest, I, so waking up in the morning and getting dressed, and my brother was at the apartment with me, where we lived first, and and all that, driving up to City View, and they're welcoming people and that kind of thing. And uh, so I'm standing there, and 
you know, the thing, hi, what about, what about you, chat with everybody and that kind of thing. And I just, I remember standing there and when she came around the corner with her parents on either side and it was just like, no joke, it was like a movie, it was like, it was what the movies tell you it was. And I think maybe that's one of the only things that, that I can remember about the day so vividly. When she came around the corner, I was like, this is real. I, I wasn't nervous and I wasn't sweating, but I just remember, I just remember com her coming around and her parents walking her down the aisle. And she, yeah, she had a Bible in her hand. Right, I didn't care if it was uh, She didn't care about I forgot she carried a Bible. And I just remember that that moment, I was like, this is this is what it is. This is this is it. This is it. So oh, wow. yeah. I think when it got real for me was was when I put when I put on the dress. I was like, this is it. This is like can't turn back. Pay a whole heap of money to all kind of people. Then I had both my parents walk me. So I had my mother on one side and my father on the other side. And when I held the Bible in my hand. I am on the dress and you're ready and stepping out. But like, this is what all the years of stress and drama and the planning and the up and down and the why we even bothering with this. Is this what we're supposed to do? That's where it was like, here we go, we we'll jump off a cliff now. Yeah. Still to come. Suspend everything that you know about marriage. Suspend the notions, the, the preconceived TV things, the, the TVs, the little horse upon the prairie. No matter with that something. <laughs> no matter with that something. But first, Carly Roberts tells us how to make sure everyone is having a good time while keeping the day running just fine. When you do a wedding as an MC, persons must believe that you're a part of the family. And that is really the difference. You, you, you give that family feeling. It's wonderful. Wow. Everything about MC in a wedding, you, that's when you bring out the joy out of everybody. That's when persons get to express themselves. This is where the bride shines. This is where persons who are shy mostly the groups you don't want to do certain things but you get them to open up the other side of them you know so that you know be able to express themselves and stuff but really and truly you want someone who is able to communicate and think of the, of the back someone who takes control of the program someone who is able to to, to connect you know, to let things run smoothly. As an MC, I tell you, we do so many things. As an MC, I see myself helping the caterers. You don't just sit back and say, okay, I, I'm just here to, to, to talk on the microphone. You ensure that, you know, the T's are across, the, the, the I's dotted. You, you, if you need to sweep somewhere, just to ensure that things flow, you take charge. I usually tell, my brides especially because they're the ones I really speak with. I say, listen, on the day of the wedding, everything and everyone comes through me at the reception. Tell nobody to come to you. There's nothing you can fix any longer. They come to me. I ensure that it's done. Wow. There's nothing hard and fast. There's no written rule that, you know, it's about jokes. No. However, jokes do play an important role, especially in Jamaican weddings. People come to be entertained, but not all the time persons are appreciative of that kind of a flow. Person, it really depends on what the bride and groom wants. Persons, they just want you to cut to it, you know, introduce this person, you know, uh, and ensure that this comes after this and it runs like that. Don't go anything over the top. So it really depends on what the bride and groom want. But in a general sense, persons go to a wedding reception 
with the idea that they're going to be entertained. <laughs> so many interesting things. Wow. I, I've been told a wedding. I was booked for a wedding in Kingston and I was traveling from Montego Bay and everybody know that's roughly at least two to three hour drive. And I was told the wedding was 11 a.m. So, uh, no, I'm sorry. I was told the wedding was 2 p.m. So I left Montego Bay 12 o'clock, knowing that you know, I'll, you know, I'll still catch the, a part of the wedding and the reception. So I'm expecting the reception is probably about four thereabouts. On my way, I got a call. The wedding was at 11. And the bride and groom didn't care to tell me that they changed from an afternoon wedding to a, more, to a morning wedding. As an MC, you have to really think of, of the bat. There was a, uh, the, the parents of a bride, they were, they were separated for about nearly 20 years. They were separated. Persons tried to get them back together with no luck. And when, when before the wedding, everybody it was you could see it was a real touchy situation. They were like, "Listen, persons have tried before. Don't do it. Don't go there. Just stay away from that." They, interestingly, though, they never dated anybody else. They, they didn't get married again. They were just separating. But the common denominator was their daughter, and they supported her for everything. Needless to say, her wedding and the MC said, um, with the parents of the bride, please stop. Yes, I called them up and he said, Is there anything that you wouldn't do for your daughter? And I said, No, we do anything for our daughter. Because we're like covering her, like, oh, you know, whatever. And he was like, You know, I'm going to play a song, and you guys just do what comes naturally. And he asked the, the MC to play an Otis Reddy song. And it so happened that that was their song. Can I tell you, everybody cried. But with a wedding, you it's really about the bride and the groom. You really want to know what they want. First of all, it's their personal touch. It's not about you, the MC. So what about, it's about what they want. Uh, they, they want um, excitement or no, they just want to, you know, go low key. And you want to ensure that they are satisfied. So you, 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 you get to ask them questions. And a lot of times, I know this is not about the weird part of it, but I've had situations where you just, I mean, I've hotel we called for a wedding and just after finishing one wedding they say listen you need another MC for another wedding you just walk into another wedding you don't know these persons but five minutes before you're like okay what's their name again and you want to ensure that you pronounce the names properly you want to ensure that you know you're you're calling all of these stuff and you're doing and oh they don't want you to mention their parents because they died or something it, it is very personal so preparing for the for to MC a wedding you have to make sure that you're touching the right chords you know what I mean it, it's not I've seen where persons are embarrassed even with toast and 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 I love to tell people have your toast reversed it, you see some wonderful toast being done, most of them are rehearsed. Don't let persons come and tell you, oh, I'm just gonna speak off the, 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 the top of my head. No, have them research how to give a, 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 a best man speech, have them research it and write one, and then they don't have to read from a paper, but, but they must be able to, to bring that across. And I say, what, what I hate is when they say, no man, just ask anybody to give a toast. I say, sure you want to do that. Especially at weddings, you know, persons drink. And sometimes when they drink, they say a lot of stuff. <laughs> Believe you me, the weirdest things. 
and you do not want that at your wedding. Really, you tell the MC the things that matter. First of all, you want the MC to have the, the correct names, but you also want to tell the MC that the songs that you that you want, if you prefer certain songs, tell the family family secrets, tell how you met, tell how you 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 both stole away when you should have gone to church meeting, y'all went somewhere else. There's so many things. <laughs> You really want to tell the MC everything. What is important to you? What it is that you want to get out there? And then some of them, the MC can guide you and say, okay, you know what? Um, it probably would be better if we left this off or if we added this to it. But you definitely, definitely, definitely want to um, important tell the MC when the reception is supposed to start. <laughs> I'm on at social media the curly c roberts and curly spelled c-u-r-l-e-y middle initial c roberts and instagram facebook youtube and my number is uh, 437-8869 let me do that with the air code 876-437-8869 hi i'm curly roberts and you're watching forever i do thanks curly now let's get back to our couple, Twain and Tamika. <laughs> um, the interesting thing that I've discovered, one of the interesting things that I find out since COVID day, let me tell you, you know, so Tamika can't cook. Wait, <laughs> wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It take a global pandemic for my wife. <laughs> to go and cook. No, and she can, and she can cook to you know, before. If you ask anybody, all of our friends over the years, they said, Twain is the one who went in the kitchen and rare. Because right? he likes to cook. Right. Um, it, it might not be fantastic, but I go in there and do something. And nobody has died since, right? But I think coming out of this, um, she started to cook. And I like it. It tastes good. It is, and I'm not just saying that because we're here. We're not looking at more points. Um, but yes, so that's one of the interesting things. That's one of the interesting things but that I Let's just talk about why I don't cook like that. We're very, very busy. When I said very busy, I mean, so we have two small children, but we're very, 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 very involved as everywhere. See, from, from even before, as you talked about national exec and that right. kind of thing. So we started at church, and at church alone, I serve in the dance ministry, we serve in young adults, we serve in the couples group, I produce at church sometimes, I sing on a praise team sometimes, youth praise team, um, he's a leader, like a liturgist, like we, we do a lot of things at church and then he plays football, I play netball and so when it's time for season and we have match and we have training and we just do a lot, there's not a lot of time to do things like cook. No, we'll go to the... Look at the places <laughs> and spend the money like KFC and Burger King. So that's one interesting thing. <laughs> you are so wicked. <laughs> Twain is very, he's a people person, right? So Twain is somebody who will, so like he emcees everywhere. He means Mr. MC, so anybody wants, anybody have an event and want a free MC in private <laughs> So, He's very, very confident, very, very, very together all the time. And that's always been something that has impressed me about him because I don't necessarily like, I'm behind the scenes, right? So I'm not necessarily as comfortable in front of how much people. And he's very, very comfortable in front of it doesn't matter. Right? Well, I'm very charming and people love him, blah, 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 blah. But what I found interesting is that he, with me at least, he's allowed himself to be so vulnerable sometimes. Um, and I don't know even know how many people, like I've seen him nervous, and I don't know how many people can say that. When we were first together, I remember I used to be oh, like, you're not nervous to this, and he'd be like, no, yeah. Is that all the people? You know, they're not gonna kill me. 
if I'm not like so what? Like he's that kind of person, very self-assured. And so it's been interesting in our time together to see the times when him not so sure and him was said to me, you know, feel a little nervous about this and just being able to to sit that side of him and even the fact that he's leaning on me sometimes to provide that kind of assurance. It's funny that you mention that because that is actually where, where my mind went just a while ago when you say that to the public your, your spouse puts out a kind of persona and this is how they're known in the public sphere but just to see the flip side of that behind closed doors to see, to see me live with me is two different things and just to see the, the person 360 as, as they discover themselves in a new, in a new paradigm so you'd have been kind of one person when you were single another person when you're dating another person when you just got married when it was just two years alone another person when you're married and just to see the person evolve in, in that kind of in that kind of setting I think it has been one of the most interesting things to see Tam Tamika evolve over time the, the realities of being married so I'll say suspend everything that you know about marriage suspend the notions the, the preconceived the things the, the TVs the Little horse upon the prairie, no bother with that something. <laughs> no bother with that something. Because, as I said, just seeing people evolve, and, and not only seeing Tamika evolve, but also over time you evolve as well. You become somebody different. You see yourself in different spaces because of the thing that life, things that life throws at you. So, it is, I always say that marriage is, is not a, I've never been somebody who thinks that, oh, I have one person who is meant for me and this is my soulmate, my partner, and that's the person just sitting there for me. However, I can say that for Tamika, I can say that she's my soulmate and my partner. And I think that has become the thing over time. The person who you met, who I met 13 years ago or whatever, is a different person today. And over time, we have become molded yeah we become molded together so to become one is not an instantaneous thing to become one i believe is a process that happens over time and you have to melt and form and melt and form and melt and form and it is it's a process that happens so so take time take the time and I, and, and i think that our world today doesn't lend itself to that kind of process that it takes that is kind of well Boy, I don't like what you tell your or something. That now work for me, it is. Yeah. Or that is not how you use it tight. Exactly. And that's how when we did, when we did first know you, but I didn't like what you tight. So, right. so you right. can't change from that. Right. Yeah. right. Allowing people to grow as you grow. Yeah. And, and growing together. That is, what, that is what I think people today should consider. That give yourself time. And if it is that you, you, you're really not ready to give yourself that time or give somebody else that time. You should consider really what you get yourself what getting yourself into. Um, as Twain say you I think that's what gets a lot of people in trouble is that you will read a book, especially females, you read the books and you watch the, the shows and they have an ideal and everything always works out after the half an hour show finish, life is good and then this is perfect. So so you have to allow yourself First of all, you have to understand who you are and be very clear about what it is, who you are and what it is that you want and you need. And you have to understand that, understand the difference between those two things. Because you can want the bad boy or you can want the perfect gentleman or you can want all these things, but what is, what is it that you need to complement who you are? And then understand that who you are, no, is not who you may be five years from now even. Right. Your job situation could change. Yeah. Yes. Corona has come in a world like completely. So like I am cooking more now and I am much more, I'm somebody who I am not at home for longer than an hour, probably to change my clothes to go again. And now I find that I, I want to be home more and I want to cook for my family and I want to bake with my little girl. So life happens and, and things change and things cause you to change and to always be in touch with yourself and have people around you who will hold you accountable yep. to who who will allow you to look into yourself connect with who you are 
And then if you are with somebody, recognize that while that change is happening in you, that change is happening with that person and allowing the space for that to happen and, and understand that this twin is not the twin, it's 25 years ago. It's not, not even the twin from five, it's not the twin before we had children. It's not the twin from before he changed jobs last year. And so we have to, we have to make that work. And so it is being aware of who I am, what I need, being able to share that and not in an aggressive way, but being able to share that in a way that he can hear me and as I can get myself heard. And then trying to, to as you said, melt and reform and melt and reform. And sometimes you have to melt and reform 10 times in one space, but mm -hmm. we have to understand that the journey is really a journey. So understanding yourself, you may, and then having people around you that, that help to be real with you. Because I have friends who, I call them all the time, that all them do is take up a twin. Um, all them do is give me his perspective. And I think a lot of why they do that is because when I'm chatting off my face and I'm upset and twin is the worst person in the world, they'll just speak something to give me, have you thought about this? That will just... So I don't have the kind of friends who go are true. Everything must say are true. No, I have friends who are like, you know, say you're right. Or did you think about it this way? Or you know, say to endow it yourself. Why would you start there? You know, so it helps to have people like that around you too. Thanks, Twain and Tamika. Here's to many more years of happiness and wedded bliss. Hi, we're Twain and Tamika, and you're watching Forever I Do. On the next episode of Forever I Do. There was a little lady from our neighborhood, her name was Miss Lily. Lily can't forget those people, you know. And she had a what to call a list down, tag down. And she looked at my mother, my mother's name was Aunt Lou. I just said, Oh my god, Aunt Lou, you don't think somebody should follow them? <laughs> <Hello, so long. laughs> because we were so young, and um, she just couldn't see us going out and start life on her own. Plus, do you need fab photography at your wedding? Fernandez Barrett walks us through capturing those magical moments. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Makeup Services by Nardine Makeup. Coordination and Planning, Shakima Hines of Island Bride, Jamaica. Set Decor, Thai Flora Lux. Forever I Do is filmed on location at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel, your wedding destination in Kingston, Jamaica.